Hey guys, welcome back to Investing in Huntsville with right. Zach and Tim, or with Tim and Zach. Tim and which, Zach. Which is which? Which flows better? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Tim Knox here from Revolt Realty. My friend Zach Childress, entrepreneur, investor, teacher, coach, sporting new glasses. Those are those are like really those are hip. Mine these are like eight dollar readers. Well, right? but your outfit overrides the glasses. Well, hey, I am wearing my your hip outfit today. Uh, this is part of the adult Garanimals collection. <laughs> this is possum and possum. <laughs> this Remember? reminds me of the Run DMC <laughs> days. <laughs> it really, it's so comfy though. Yeah, I am finally at the point. I'm that old man wearing the gym clothes. That's to work, it, so. man. Yeah, but remember Garanimals when you were a little kid? I don't think I'm they that were, old. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Garanimals were it was a line of clothing for kids so they could dress themselves and like they were animals like uh, um, a bear top and bear pants. Don't remember. If they saw the they were actually brilliant and they called them Garanimals. If you you match a, a bear top with bear pants, you're dressed accordingly. Of course, I was like. Uh, here's a possum and a skunk. Right, that would be you know my I mean? <laughs> So Anyway, hey, uh, welcome in. Episode two of, uh, of the podcast. This is the podcast where we talk about investing in Huntsville. The beautiful place of Huntsville, Alabama. It really is. How was your week? What's, uh, you told Man, me you were very busy with projects. This week has been incredible. I've got three deals getting closed. I got four getting sold. I, got, I was analyzing two more this morning. Like... It's wild out there right so now. So things have not slowed down for you. 2020 December was literally the best December I'd had in a decade. Why do you think that is? I think it was just the lack of inventory. People yeah. did not want to list their properties. They didn't want people walking through their houses. And then you still had this migration of people moving here. Mm -hmm. And so they had to buy something. So whatever mm -hmm. was out there, they were just chomping at the bits to get it. Yeah. So. How, are, how are the prices, though? I mean, yeah, I mean, we both know prices here last year went off the charts yeah. for retail. How well, are they? Because you have a very specific box that you invest in. You've got some very strict rules. But, you know, you got to remember, I analyze probably 20 deals a week. Do you? Like, I, I, like <laughs> when I say I, I'm like, I'm literally analyzing deal after deal. Yeah. So I, I'm very, um, I guess you could say, finger on the pulse when I'm looking at neighborhoods and pricing. And I'll give mm -hmm. you an example. One this morning. Um was a it was a prime example where twelve months ago things in that neighborhood were selling for one ninety a square. Mm -hmm. Six months ago they were selling for one eighty, and in the last three months they were selling for one seventy. Mm -hmm. Right, and so that was that one neighborhood. But then you go to a completely different neighborhood, and they haven't fluctuated at all. So right. when we talk about pricing, I think the key to understanding pricing isn't that there's just this one blanketed movement that everything's going up or everything's yeah. going down. I think as an investor, we get that specifically because we're always micro data. We're looking specifically in neighborhoods and you'll see fluctuation from neighborhood to neighborhood. And a lot of times that depends on school systems, yeah. the original builder, the age of the property. And also it has a big, um, uh, I guess you could say there's a big influence on is there anything on the market for sale in that right. area? Yeah, so. that, that you could actually do a deal on. That's right. Well, no, I don't mean yeah. that. I mean, as in, if there's a lot of things on the market for sale, we, we will naturally see prices going down. Right. If there's nothing in that neighborhood for sale, then we'll see prices hold steady. Yeah. Okay. Let, let, well, let's start off this episode just by talking about the title of the show, Investing in Huntsville. What makes Huntsville, and really North Alabama, yeah. Primarily Huntsville Instrument. What what makes it such a hotbed for investing right now? Because we're getting a ton of interest from investors. Oh, well, I mean, golly, man, we could go for hours on this. Well, you got um, 27 minutes. <laughs> then I'm out of here. Don't tell me I got to go to the gym and lift heavy things for no uh, reason. <laughs> you know, I think, um, you know, I've been investing in this market now going on 14 years. Mm -hmm. And we didn't really see that the hit until probably, I don't know, eight years ago or something like that. But I think it has a lot to do, and people don't want to identify this, but it has a lot to do with our elected officials mm -hmm. because they've done an amazing job of recruiting great companies to come here right. and bidding on these, <clears throat> these uh, opportunities, whether it be through tax credits or any type of uh, incentive to bring these companies here and our military base. Like yeah. you, you take those two, those two aspects of what we have in Huntsville and you take our average per capita income here. It's high. It's the same as San Diego, California. Yeah. 
Crazy, right? yeah. It's insane. Mm -hmm. um, and so when you take all of that, which a lot of people don't look at the economic stimulation of an economy, they just look at the real estate. That's what drives this market, right? And that's mm -hmm. what has, one, made it such a great area to buy in. But two, I mean, we're one of the far few towns or cities out there that still have that hometown feel we do yeah but growing so quickly and we're not growing up we're growing wide right. and so we don't have like that big downtown city vibe but we still have that hometown feel here yeah and the schools are amazing here. I mean, I could go on and on and I think when you take all that in and then you add on top of that all the media that's picked us up and mm -hmm. then put us out there in public We're at the top of a lot of lists. You add that on top of the fire that we're growing at and then all the media exposure to our market, when you've got people sitting in you know, Washington and New York and California and they're looking at it and they're going, well, I can't get this here. Let me go there. Yeah. And yeah. so that's part of that. Yeah. I, was, I, I had a, a conversation with Paul Finley, who's uh, yeah. mayor of Madison. And we were talking about the, the growth challenges out there while still trying to maintain a small town feel. Oh. You know, because Madison right now is at like 60,000 yeah. residents. And, and we need yeah. wider roads. Uh, yeah, Paul, <laughs> Paul is well aware. <laughs> He's like, I don't want to talk about roads. Um, but, you know, you're, you're not going to find a whole lot to invest in out there. At least not it's going to come to the market. It's going to go right. before, you know. It, 100%. Well, I, I talked to a lady. Uh, well, I, didn't, I didn't talk to her. I, I walked through the home. Um, really good neighborhood. You know, big 4,100 square feet. Walking through the house basically needed everything. Yeah. And so, you know, let's say the ARV on this house was going to be 575. She wanted 550 as it sat. It needed 100 plus. And so there's still that unrealistic view oh, of a right. lot of sellers. Yep. You know, well, my neighbor's house sold for seven. Well, it was perfect. It was yep. redone. So um, let's talk about the different pockets of investment here. Because Huntsville is one of those cities that, I mean, you could just draw lines. with oh, yeah. South Huntsville, Medical District. North Huntsville. Twickingham, yeah. uh, Five Points, North Huntsville. Then you've got Madison. Um, let's, let's talk about investing in the various areas. Let's start with South Huntsville. Because South Huntsville... Yeah used to be the place. Of course. I mean, Grissom was the big high yep. school back then. That's where all the engineers lived. Well, now South Huntsville is kind of aging out. A lot of flipping well, going on. A lot of flip because it's the age of the housing, right? right? And yep. you can still get an, an older house at a good price because mm -hmm. it needs work. Um, but also, I think some of the things that hurt South Huntsville was those overpasses that went in. Yeah. I really do, because if you think about when it was so thriving, I mean, you could just drive down the parkway and just turn off and, and move in. And now you got to turn off, get off, circle around, go back through. Yeah. And that did hurt. Before I moved from California back home, <clears throat> we were actually building a house in South Huntsville. And I kind of saw all that happening. And so we decided to sell it and move yeah. to Madison. But in South Huntsville, I think it's a very clear path. I mean, the, I almost break South Huntsville into three categories. And if you take the parkway and you go west of the parkway, you get into a little bit more rental, some lower price mm -hmm. homes, um, older, a lot more renters over there. You take the parkway and you go a little bit east of it. That's where we get that first time home buyer neighborhood, right. right? You can absolutely get stuff in there for, as a rehabber myself, I can go in there and still find deals between a hundred and 150,000 and then get them on the market at 250 yeah. or 275. Yep. Now you move a little bit, east of that and you get towards the base of the mountain mm -hmm. we get into higher price homes yeah. we get into a lot of foundation issues up in there mm -hmm. and but it's that it you also in an essence over the years i've learned is that you lose a portion of your buyer pool when you move closer to the mountain. So the closer that we move off of the parkway towards the mountain, the east side, so we have the three sections in the south, right? We have more of a rental, lower price on the west side of the mm -hmm. parkway. And we the parkway is the main north-south 231, yeah. right? The right, parkway. splits the city. On the east side of the parkway, you get into what we talked about. But when you get closer to the mountain there, you get higher pricing, right? Mm -hmm. But I've learned over time that you lose a portion of your buyer pool over there because there's no backyards. Right. And and the yards are kind of steep and the driveways are a little bit steeper. And so we lose a portion of those buyer pools. So I've always classified South Huntsville in three categories. Um, I try to stay inside that middle one. Right, mm -hmm. just east of the parkway, yep. you know, all the way down to Rideout Road and, you know, on up to, you know, 
closer to downtown if you really ask. Yeah. So, but that's South Parkway or yeah. South Huntsville right. in my eyes. So older homes, uh, really people, a lot of them are state homes because people live there forever Ever. and they don't move until they pass yeah. away. And then we're dealing with the families. Yeah. Uh, and you got shag carpet and blue bathrooms. Oh yeah. You got that. I went in there one the other day. One of the bathrooms had pink tile. Yeah. Another one had blue got and one then like you had that right orange now. shag carpet. Yeah. Got one. Yep. Reminded me of an old van I used to have so back in the day. So that's South Huntsville, that's, right? All right, let's move, now let's go, move well, north. Hold on, hold okay. on. you got to even a little bit further south than that. Okay. When you get down into like Ob's Island Road and over close behind to the, the river. New, close to the river. And even back behind where that Walmart and, uh, um, you know, all that. Lowe's uh, back in there. Further south than yeah. that. But there's, a, there's a, a section back there where if you were back here during the foreclosure crisis, man, those things we were buying for forty, fifty thousand dollars Wow, yeah. Um, uh, but it was a lower price point housing community mm -hmm. um, where people were buying for 120, 150 back there. So I almost feel like that's a whole nother section in itself back yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. But now move up a little bit. Okay, so it. we're coming from South Huntsville, then we get into like the medical district. Medical district, five points, that whole little mm -hmm. area, even though it could be two categories because the medical district did a great job of revitalizing and builders came in and did an amazing job of buying those houses and building these brand new three and 4,000 yeah. square foot homes right. that they were getting 250 a square and the house next door was getting 80 a square, yeah. right? <laughs> and I think that led a trend that moved into five points. Right, see and that then, a lot. And then five points started doing that at, at the same time. But, you know, those are what we call almost like um, stimulated areas because the medical district really caters to that whole hospital, mm -hmm. that walk, that nurse, the, that type of um, industry. Where the right. we're, we're five points just south of California Street and all that, or north of California Street, and you start moving into there. I think that's just more of like a little bit of a transient type area. Kind of a area. cool vibe it type is. area. It is. It yeah. is. It is. Old town. People like to walk around down there. I've flipped a few houses over there. I don't like flipping over there. Yeah. Um, I know a lot of people are like, why? Why, why do you not? It, because you get into, um, uh, oh my goodness, uh, approvals over there because you've got the, um, why can I not think of it right now? Um they have their own governing body over there that you have to go through if you want to change the paint. Oh, it's like a historical it, thank society. You, a historical society. Yeah. And the last one we did on Pratt Street was a nightmare um, yeah. because we had to keep getting approvals from them and it drug it out. And yeah. so I just, I don't, I just don't like. We, we call them the hysterical society. Well, absolutely. Because you got to wait for them to meet before <laughs> yep. they all approve on the paint. Even though it's the exact same paint that the house was originally painted at, they've got to approve it. Yeah. So. Well, one thing, and you touch on this that I think is interesting is especially in, in five points, five points is an older area of town. Uh, a lot of small two bedroom, one bath yep. bungalows that were built you know, a hundred years ago or, or whatever. Um, and they all have very low ceilings. Yeah. You notice that, you know, you walk right. in and the, the ceilings are like six feet tall. Well, you know why they people all were built, short, right? <laughs> Uh, probably, was it Low Mill or support the arsenal? That, it was the mill. Yeah. So the guy who 100 years ago owned that mill went over and built all these little houses mm -hmm. for his workers to, to right. live in. And that's why they were just little cheap small houses. Yeah. And then they came in and duplexed like 80% of them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Where you had to go through a bedroom to get to a bathroom and a kit. It was all shotguns. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They're very, very narrow houses because the lots are narrow and Very and narrow. Yep. But what I was referring to is you'll go down like a McKinley. Yep. And on this side of the road, there are all these little hundred-year-old two-bedroom, one-bath bungalows that are just not in great shape. Right. And directly across the street, <laughs> someone's come in and bulldozed right. the entire block and built these half a million dollar, two and three story homes. Hundred percent. You see it all over in Five yeah. Points. You think eventually everything in Five Points will just be bulldozed and rebuilt? Uh no, no, because some people just won't sell. Yeah. I mean, let's just be honest, right? Some people, they're on their fourth generation of ownership over there. Yeah. And they're not going to sell them. And, and and I think that's a lot. When we talk about revitalizing neighborhoods, well, there has to be a seller and there has to be a buyer. True. And there are plenty of buyers who mm -hmm. want to buy, but not all sellers are going to want to sell. Yeah. You've got kids. You ever see the movie Up? Of course. You got Mr. Yeah. What, the old man. Yeah. There's all this construction going on and around him. And there's his little house. tiny, yeah. tiny house. So. There's real life stuff on that. In yeah. Like New York and in the major cities where you still see the little house. And yeah. Never sold. Yeah. Um, Twickenham is also down. And Twickenham is the high dollar historic 
beautiful old mansion type things and a lot no not a lot of flipping but every now and then you'll see one going under remodel down there that's true and that's not a cheap one yeah Yeah, it's hard to get a house over there actually um i mean as an investor yeah and and it goes back to is like well you know we're, we're talking from two different angles obviously as an investor as an agent dealing with retail buyers you know for us we're always cautious on how long we're going to have it, mm-hmm. right? Unless it's a rental, which we'll get into that market mm-hmm. the more north we go. Mm-hmm. Um, but we try to stay, especially right now with interest rates, we're trying to stay below the resale of 300000 Yeah, same. Which shuts off a lot of neighborhoods out there right yeah, now. Yeah, it really does. But when rates come back down, hopefully next year, <laughs> we'll be right back <laughs> yeah, in those half you. a million dollar so, neighborhoods. All right, so let's move north of Five Points, getting okay. into North Huntsville, which... Uh, is a hotbed right now. A lot Three, of investment five, eight, going one, on there. Zero. Yeah. That market stretches from the west of 231, the parkway, even across over to the east, over mm-hmm. and by A&M. Um, so that market was an anomaly. And I say that because, man, I wish I wouldn't have sold all the houses I bought up there for fifteen and $20,000. Yeah. Because now they're $150,000. And I still own, I don't know, a dozen houses up there, but... I'm shocked at one, what we're getting for rents yeah. and two, what their actually values are right now, because yeah. I bought all these things under 50 grand and we're getting 1600 a month in rents. Right. Crazy, yeah. And, but that area Ooh. also is the most volatile area. It is. It yeah. is the most volatile area. So if you're going in those markets, let's just speak from an investor point of view. If you're going into that market, they're little two ones, three ones, three, two ranch style homes. Mm-hmm. They're great little brick homes. They mm-hmm. last forever. Mm-hmm. Like they were built really well. But the downside of it is, is we we're seeing a lot of investors running up there paying 150 a, a, for a house, trying to rent it for, you know, 15, 1600. Mm-hmm. Well, when you're, you're waving at my camera, oh my bad. <laughs> I, I'm, I, can't, I know you talk with yeah. your hands, but, um, when the inventory spikes over there, that I, I believe three, five, eight, one, oh, is where we're going to see a probably one of the hardest hits. Yeah, you Not, think so? I do. Not from owners, but from investors. Yeah. Well, and let's talk about that for just a second because the, you know this better than I do. There's a lot of wannabe investors who have gone out, jumped on deals, a lot of times without doing the math. And now you think this coming year, there's going to be some some realization for these guys? Well, I think so, because <laughs> we're going to talk a little bit about that. I got a little yep. fancy sheet for yep. you that we let's can Let's talk into. about your fancy sheet. Well, this is, and, and we'll put an image up here somewhere. Yeah, somewhere, <laughs> right. Over, but over this is something that we should be looking at because one thing that affects our real estate market more than what people realize is what's known as the Fed's balance sheet. Okay. And so if you look at the Fed's balance sheet and you can see where the Fed is coming in to stimulate a market and when they're trying to unstimulate a market. So for example, in 2009, the Fed's balance sheet was maybe a, I don't know, a, a trillion dollars. What What is the balance sheet? What does it That's show? That's just how much money they're they're putting into a market okay. and, and bringing out. And there's a there's a great little sheet. Yeah, we'll throw sheet. that up. Mm-hmm. Um, but in 2009, we knew we were in a, in a crisis, right, as a real estate itself. So right. the Fed's went from $1 trillion of putting money into the market all the way up to $4.2 trillion from 2009 to 2015, which if you know, as they put more money in the market, what happened? Man, prices started going back up. We started stable off. I mean, 2013, 14, 15, you go all the way over it was great markets mm-hmm. because they were helping stimulate mm-hmm. that. And it, it, fl- it plateaued from 2015 to 2020. They weren't stimulating the market. They weren't putting more money in the market. They weren't you know, pushing rates down. It was great. Then you look at 2020, it started dipping. So what did the feds freaked out? COVID was here and mm-hmm. the feds came in and just dumped another $4 trillion into the market from 2020 to 2022. Rates went down, prices skyrocketed, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, how do you run prices up? You bring rates down, right? Right. Yeah. Well, in May of last year, the, the Fed said, look, our balance sheet is way too high. It's $8.5 trillion. They want to keep it at about $4 trillion. That's where they think that the market is stable and stimu- mm-hmm. stimulated enough. Mm-hmm. So they took a plan in May of 2022 to say, hey, we're going to start pulling money back out of the market from stimulation to 2027. And you'll see in this little diagram here that they're predicting that by 2027, they'll be back down to about $4 trillion in a balance sheet, yeah. which historical data says 
as feds pull money back out of the market to unstimulate it, prices go down. Right. Now, this is obviously national. Sure. Every market is different. But I say that to say this is that I do personally believe that the marketing and the pricing will stabilize mm -hmm. until next year, depending on what the election does. If the rates go back down, this it'll offset that. Yeah. Because yeah. then people can get cheap money, right? Yeah. For example, you buy a hundred and eighty five thousand dollar house right now in today's market, your your payment's like twelve, thirteen hundred. Yeah. Right? Versus if you got it for a four percent your payment was like half of that. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it stimulates naturally that way. But you should be looking, anybody, if you're in the investing world, looking at how the Fed affects us as real estate investors. Yeah, yeah. It all trickles down. It does. It really <laughs> does. Yeah. And it takes a little while, but it trickles. And yeah. we can stay ahead of it by looking at certain indicators. Yeah. I want to I wanna do a whole show on, on the money side of things, on what's going on in the market, how to get money, hard money, all that yeah, stuff. We'll do a, yeah, yeah, an entire yeah. thing on that. But um, finishing up on, on the investing here, we had made it to North Huntsville. North Huntsville. What are you seeing even further north, Marie? I think a lot that, of new construction. I, okay, so now we're speaking my language okay. because I'm a believer that you don't, in today's economy and market, when you have a massive influx of investors, you can't be in what's called a, a prime market, which right. prime for us is the Huntsville area. Mm -hmm. You got to move out into the outskirts, which like north of yeah. five or north of what we call three, five, eight, one, oh, you start moving into Meridianville, Hazel. More Green. out in the country, but a lot of development. But it's not really out in the country yeah. anymore. If you drive out there, Man, there's businesses everywhere mm -hmm. out there now, mm -hmm. right? There's subdivisions being built. There's infrastructure being built. There's Walmarts and Dollar Generals and grocery stores and restaurants and banks. Yeah. So they have literally said, look, we we can't build for this price in Huntsville anymore. We've got to now start going out mm -hmm. and buying farmland, mm -hmm. and we got to do it so that the migration has somewhere to go. So I believe if you're in the right mindset of buying investments for long term, you want to get in front of the progression of growth. Right. That would be it. So now would be a time to be going out there buying those existing homes. A hundred percent. And and turning those into investment properties. Stabilize them though. Don't yeah. just buy them. Yeah. <laughs> buy, buy, buy them buy and make sure they can stabilize. With them. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Are you doing any new construction investing at all? Um, not right now, just because we're, we're in the mindset that it's more speculated investing. And when you have a market that's unstable, looking at feds, looking at rates, speculation becomes even, even a more riskier game in this type of model. Right. So I just don't go that route. Now I've done plenty of it in, in my yeah. history, but right now we're just, yeah, not. well, we have a, and in case you don't know what we're talking about, there's a, uh, a lot of building going on here. Some yeah. of the builders are investor friendly. Some are not yep. until the end of the year when they have inventory to dump. Yeah. And then I get those phone calls. Well, you, I'll give you some <laughs> inside information on that. Well, what, what the, uh, the model there, and I've got a lot of investors that do this is they will come in, put new construction under contract today. Yep. I'm going to pay this much. Well, Eight to ten months later, when they close, they've already appreciated what 10, 15 percent in some 100%. cases. So they then will close paying the money that they agreed to ten months ago, and then they'll either Airbnb or they'll do short or long term yeah. rentals. Well, that's what we call investing in phase one, phase two. So mm -hmm. when you go to a new construction as an investor, when you go to a new construction subdivision, you're trying to identify who the builders are so that you can find out when their next subdivision is being built because you want to buy in on phase one. Mm -hmm. Because if they've got four phases or five phases in, in the pipeline, if you can get in on phase one, by the time they're at phase three, your prices, because they're increasing prices along yeah, the way. Yeah, totally. But let me just give you some inside information. Okay. So I'm always talking to the vice presidents of a lot of the local banks around here. And I was shocked when I heard this, but it, they won't tell me the names, but at least five of the builders in town are already defaulting on their construction loans. Really? Yep. Wow. And so the banks are like, Zach, get ready. We're going to start sending you stuff. Mm -hmm. Right. And I'm like, Hey, why? And they're like, we can't tell you who, but we've got builders that are defaulting on their construction loans because they went out trying to build this idea of this five, six, seven hundred thousand dollar house. Yeah. And rates aren't sustaining. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. I mean, most of the new big box construction is yeah. in the three to four hundreds. Which, but, by the way, yeah. will hurt the phase one, phase two buyers. Mm -hmm. Because if phase three and phase four, they're having to liquidate at cost. Yeah. It's going to really hurt the yeah. value. Yeah. Well, this one thing I hear a lot about is, especially over the last year where the, the market has been so inflated. Yes. People overpaid. Yes. You know, they're... 
they're upside down, whether yeah. they like to admit it or not on a lot of homes. Yeah. But uh, yeah, let, let's wrap up and let's talk about uh, quickly the east of Huntsville, over the mountain, the Owens Crossroads, oh, Hampton yeah. Cove, yeah, and then west there. going toward Athens. So I, I think anything headed out towards Oregon Crossroads, if you can get out there and start buying and holding and flipping, you're in a great position because mm -hmm. that that whole area, I mean, if you go into Owens Crossroads, you can see all the development. But if you get like further east on the other side of Owens right. Crossroad, you're there once again. You're getting in front of the progression of Yeah, growth. which I think is good, yeah. And that's great. Same thing headed out towards um, Limestone um, County, Athens, is I believe that area is still – going to just keep growing and mm -hmm. developing. I, if you really look at it, Athens is actually growing faster towards us than we are towards them. Yeah. But I, we're going to meet. And that whole pocket right there between the Athens and Madison, I I'm gonna, think is I'm a gonna great I'm going to tie position. that hand down. Ah, man, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. So, yeah, so you, you make a good point, though. It's really funny because I think eventually – You'll drive from Huntsville to Madison to Athens, yeah. and it'll just be one it'll long look, retail yep. strip. <laughs> I agree. You know? It'll look like going from Huntsville to Madison. It really will. Yeah. 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 So very I cool. Agree. Well, uh, final thoughts on just uh, why why this is a, a good place to invest? I think it's a good place to invest for long term. Okay. Yeah. If you're in the game of flipping, yeah, you got to be a little bit sharper on yeah. your game to find deals that just everybody isn't looking at. Mm -hmm. But if you can find them right, there's lots of money to be made. Um yeah, so I could go more okay. depth than that. But if you're in the game of hold and you're in the game of wealth and you're in the game of positioning, which we call it forced appreciation, is when you buy the property in, in front of progression of growth, the growth will force the value up and rents up. If you can sustain that type of model, man, in 10, 15 years, you'll be thanking yourself for yeah. that. So it's a long-term play. I, I, I don't think this market's slowing down. No. I, well, well, I, I think either. we'll have some you know, some shifts. I think rates are affected us a little bit. I think some markets are, are already shifting. Mm -hmm. But I don't. I just don't see us as like a major market like Arizona, yeah. California. We're not going to see a huge drop yeah, like good. that. Zach Childress, if folks want to get in touch with you, how do they do so? Pretty easy. You can check us out on our website, MadisonCountyRIA, REIA.com, or come join our Facebook group where we share all kinds of great information. And you can find that at um, MecReaGroup.com, M C R E I A Group.com. How often do you guys meet? Once a month, the first Thursday of every yeah. single you month. You usually have a full house, too. Man, we got our next one is uh, the second of next month, and we've got like 100 people coming out. Wow. Yeah. But we, the topic is about foreclosures. Yeah. So that's exciting. We need to talk about that. Maybe next week we'll uh, spend some time on that. So. Yeah. All right. Hey, uh, don't forget, guys, I am uh, Tim Knox with Revolved Realty, uh, fastest growing little independent brokerage in town. Love that. Now, almost 100 ages, man. That day we were like that. number 14 in the market. Last That's year, awesome, which That's awesome. kind of blew my mind. So uh, little anyway, you. little old me and all my helpers. It right, ain't just me. Right, so, right. Uh, but anyway, if you are thinking about moving to the area or you're looking to invest in the area, give us a call. Uh, contact information is below. We work with a lot of investors here locally, as well as California, D.C., everywhere. So, all right, guys, that's going to uh, do it. Leave your comments below. Let us know what you'd like us to talk about on a future show, and we will cover it. Awesome. Because we can talk about it. Anything. He had to shut me up. Did you see that? <laughs> I'm going to tie that hand down next time. <laughs> All right, guys. See you later. Bye. <laughs>